Good morning, everyone, and welcome to an old cowboy talking about Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, what an awesome time we're having today. We just thank you, Lord, that you're so awesome just to watch and to be in your presence, that we know that, we, that you're ever present with us, helping us to grow and to be your kids. We know that you're backing every move that we make. You are leading us and guiding us and moving things in front of us and around us that we know that we know that you're doing this to help us to be the kind of man and woman that you'd have us to be. We just come forth and receive your spirit today to guide every move because the word says that everyone who's led by the spirit are sons and daughters of yours, Father. So we thank you, Lord, that we can and we are your kids. And so we just bless you today with your presence. We know that your presence is ever present. We know that your glory is upon us. And Father, we thank you that we're changed into the image of your dear son. And that we, re we just appreciate very, very much. And we just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Today, if you <clears throat> got your Bible, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17 and 18. Now it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and the Lord is that Spirit. And for we're changed from glory to glory into the image of God's dear Son. You know, most people don't know and have never been taught who they are in Christ Jesus. We have been born out of darkness, brought into the light in the second and third chapter and fourth chapter of, of 2 Corinthians, where we have been brought out of darkness, manifest a sweet aroma, and the veil that separates man and, and, and God has been torn down. When Jesus was crucified and when he died, the veil that separated the inner court and the Holy of Holies was torn down and there was no longer <clears throat> a separation between God and man. But it says there in that third chapter that every time the old covenant is read, there's a veil put up. What that means is they cannot do the Ten Commandments. Now, I know we love the Lord's law and we're, we're taught to do that, but he also tells us to come over into the new covenant, which was cut by the blood of his son. The blood of his son took down and cleansed and made us have two commands. Thou shalt Lord, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul and thy being. Thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. When we realize that we have a new covenant, we're covenant brothers, we're covenant sisters brought into the kingdom of heaven here on earth by the blood of Jesus. We've been washed, we've been set free through that blood. We've been the renewing of our mind with the word daily. So we've been brought out and the presence of God is on us and teaching us the kingdom living here now. Most of us never, never enter into the kingdom. Now, yes, we get born again, and yes, we go to church, and we're tithers, and we have a certain pew, and we do all those things. But most of that is legalistic. Most of us, our heart is not near to God or even looking for the presence of God. So today we're talking about the presence of the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is God's presence. In Joel, it was prophesied 800 years before Jesus was born. So that's approximately 2,800 years ago. It was prophesied by Joel, one of the minor prophets. He said, in those last days, I will pour forth of, of my spirit upon the sons and daughters, and all shall hear my voice and know my voice. Well, then when Peter, Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, verse 14 through 17, when the Spirit of God had came on the day of Pentecost like a mighty rushing wind, the people heard and knew that something was going on. And Peter got up and he preached and 3,000 souls entered the kingdom that day. What is amazing about that was he said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So if we know that we're under covenant relationship and we're walking with God, as an old rancher, we make contracts and buy cattle and sell cattle and, and make contracts for land and do all these things. And all of it is done and we, we honor it through what we do at the end of the contract. Sure, we put up a partial payment and then we come and finish the final payment. But when you realize that God made a, an initial and then he made a final payment when he gave us his son. He says, it is finished on the cross. Everything that God's doing for, for a while, except the prophetic utterances in his word that haven't been fulfilled, is still yet to come. But everything else is fulfilled. Thou shalt know my, me and I will be your father to you. So he made himself a father to all, the saved and the unsaved through the blood of his son. He gave us that covenant blood that means everything that we are or hope to be belongs to him and everything that he has belongs to us. So we must realize that we're covenant people walking in the power of who he made us. He made us same image of himself. If you read that 
2 Corinthians 3.18, you will see that we are changed or transformed or translated or metamorphosized into exactly like the Spirit, like God. We're made exactly like that. So we began to realize that we can do all things through Christ, the Anointed One, because we have been anointed also. When you realize that you are anointed to do whatever God's plans and purposes are because they are irrevocable in your life and mine. But you will have people that will be teaching Sunday school or teaching from the pulpit, and they'll say, well, I can't do this. No, you and I cannot do it in our power. We're not supermen or superwomen, but we have the power of God who created this whole universe to go through us and to help us fulfill what he sent us to do. Always and always realize that it's him doing it through you and me. It's not us doing it. He's doing it through us. So we are the vessel or the translator or the transformer that he's working his power through. Like the transformer up on electric pole. The power comes in, the current comes in and goes through that transformer and then out into the various currents and out through the various outlets. You and I are an outlet for the Holy Spirit. Now we can deny him and call him part of the devil and speaking in tongues is of the devil. But when you do that, you're classifying God, the Holy Spirit, and, and the devil as one and the same. I don't think you ought to be doing that. I sure don't want to do that because I don't know how far or how close that is to blasphemy, but it could be. Be careful what you say about the Holy Spirit because he is the one who brings us to the realization that we're sinners. He's the one who brings us to the place that we need to know that we need a Savior. He's the one that tells us what to do or leads us into what to do. He's a perfect gentleman. But we must realize that we're being changed by the Holy Spirit. Now, you'll hear people say, well, we went out and got some people saved. Or we went out and prayed for some people that are sick. No, you were led out there and God had the various people and the various places put in contact where when you got there, he had already been there and he had everything ready for you to share what he laid upon your heart. It was not you. It was the Spirit of God in you and me that causes those people to receive Jesus as Lord. He is also the one that cleans them up from the drugs, the sex, the problems they have, the, whatever they are. He it is the Holy Spirit that does that. You don't do it. Your pastor can't do it. I can't do it. It is God himself by his spirit upon us. Remember what it says in Zechariah 4, 6. It says, not by power. We want to go out and rough somebody up or kick somebody when they do something wrong. Not by power or might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He does these things by his Holy Spirit. When you got saved or asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, it wasn't something you thought you needed. It was something the Spirit of God was laying in your heart and causing you to dwell on and to think about where you knew that you needed a Savior. Now, the Spirit was given to mankind as a seal of our inheritance in the anointing in Christ. So when we have the Holy Spirit, we know that we know that we know that we can trust our, our most inward parts of our being because it is renewed by the Word and it is likened to Jesus because we're changed into the same image. Dwell on those Ephesians. Uh, no, why do I keep saying Ephesians? Well, I'll tell you why I keep saying Ephesians 3.17. It says we, we are a new person and now God is able to do these exceedingly abundantly things that we desire through the power that works within us. So you began to receive this, you began to understand it. Now go to back to 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 8. It says we are changed into the same image as the anointing. In other words, the same power, the same presence of God, the same thing again. So you begin to understand what he's trying to say to you and I or do through you and me. You know, I went to church for years and years and years, and I heard a, uh, a salvation message every Sunday, and I was saved, and I, I didn't hear anything new. It was the same message I heard from everybody else. And I was wondering, I said, Lord, what about the rest of the hours, the other 167 hours a week that we live? Can we live and operate in this world, everything around us doing what is happening? Can we live with only one hour on Sunday morning, a little, a little church service, a 20-minute or 30-minute sermon by a good pastor? What, can, what are we learning? Well, if we're getting saved every week, how are we going to know how to live when the ditch is broken and the fence is down and the cattle are out and the children are in the neighbor's yard <clears throat> and the horses run away and the dogs have bitten somebody and the pickups broke down and the windmill's torn up and we can't pay our bank note and we can't do all that? How, how are we going to live? How are we going to know what to do? So we did, we go, first thing we do, if we're having divorce problems or, or marriage problems, we'll go ask somebody who's been married and divorced or we'll go seek counsel somewhere. 
And, and maybe we seek it in all the wrong places. We never go to God. Or if we get sick in our body, we run to a doctor, or we run to a pharmacist, or we t pop a pill, or we do all these things. We never ask God anything. We just go do it. Do you realize that He wants to be in everything? He knows the hair on your head. He knows everything about you. He knows your heart. He knows all your thoughts. And yet you run to everybody and your brother and ask them, I read a story about a man the other day that a house came up and, and this man said, we thought you ought to have this. So he said, I just bought it. Didn't even ask God. He said, well, the first thing he realized that he didn't have the money to pay for the thing. So what happens to the man? He got himself out there and got, he, his wife told him, he says, if you ask God about it. No. So he finally prayed and asked God. And he told him to go talk to a certain, certain man. And this man says, here's the money and just gave it to him, paid the house off and everything was fine. But you and I go get ourselves in an armload of trouble, go out and get knee deep in a, in a gator pit and being eaten up every moment by the alligators and the bankers and uh, all the things that are happening to us. And we say, hey, God, where are you? Well, I'm telling you, you got to have a little more than just a salvation message. You got to have a little meat and potatoes to go with that strawberries and whipped cream or the blessings of the Father upon you. You got to understand what He's telling you and what He's telling me that we must walk with God. Don't get so fancy and so high and mightily in your word study that you don't realize that it, you got to get down to where the basics are. What are the basics? That you must make Jesus the Lord of your life. Secondly, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, you must renew your mind daily with the Word. You must present your body is a living sacrifice. You must be obedient to the things of God. If you're not doing those things in those various orders there, you're going to wind up out in la-la land as some people think. Well, where's la-la? Who knows where la-la is, but you're going to be out there and you're not going to have the answers to know how to walk and live in everyday life. The Bible says you're going to have many trials and tribulations. Count it all joy in James 1.4. Well, how can you count it all joy when you're eyeball deep in debt and you're sick, to, sick and your wife's sick and your kids are sick and you, don't, you just can't pay attention you're so poor? Well, why don't you stop and say, get your wife by the hand or your best friend by the hand and say, we're going to pray and we're going to listen and we're going to hear from the Father because he's a know-it-all and he knows everything. And he can help us get this deal done. You know, I learned something a long, long time ago. We'd be moving cattle. And there was an old guy that used to help us. and He, he would play the piano and the guy was a master at the piano, praise and worship. And he was always praying. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm just taking authority over these cattle. They're going to be gentle. And they're going to cross these highways, and go through these gates and do whatever we were trying to do with them. And he said, there wouldn't be an outlaw in the bunch and every one of them would do what we told them to do. And I thought, okay, if we can do that over an animal, surely we ought to be able to do it over other things. So as you began in the simplest areas of your life, through prayer, through Bible study, through meditation, through quiet time, whatever you want to call it, praise and worship music, whatever, it brings you into God's presence. And that's what we're talking about here today. We have to have Him in our life. Life without Jesus is not too good. Life without the Father is worse. Have you ever thought about where you are? Have you ever thought about where you're going? Have you ever thought about what method of operation you're going to choose? Well, we have these famous things. Now, that's a TMO or too much information. Well, let me tell you something, bub. You need to get down where the gravel and the rock meets the road, the rubber meets the road. You need to get down there and just lay down there for a minute and ask yourself, am I really in God's will? Am I really in God's presence? I know there's something pulling on me. There's something tugging on me. And I'm eyeball deep in all this stuff, and I don't know what to do. Well, I'm telling you today, if you'll get in God's presence through His Word, through prayer, through meditation, through just plain old talk, you know, you don't have to be spiritual. That's what was the matter with those folks in Jesus' day. They were so religious. They had to do everything according to what some person had written down. Let me tell you something. God doesn't honor that kind of junk. It's just junk. It's just religious tradition. It'll suck the life out of you. Get serious. You don't have to call God Father 55 times in a little two-minute prayer. When you said Father in the name of Jesus, you had His attention. Why do you go through all this stuff? Why are you wasting your time? Is your time not important to you? Is your life not important to you that you'd want it on the right road? Well, we live in a time where the political situation is bad. Have you ever thought about praying and asking God to change it or maybe change your heart or my heart? Have you ever, you ever thought about that? Well, no, we just go vote or we just watch the TV so who the most likable candidate is. Well, knowing the likable candidate and knowing his heart or her heart might be a long way from nowhere. 
And that's generally where we don't want to be because we are people with a purpose and a plan. We know that God is God. We know that Jesus is his son and we must be led by his spirit. And we must read his word to know and listen so we can live every day to the fullest. You know, I did a sermon not too long ago about enjoying every moment. Enjoy every moment because you're not going to have this moment ever again. It will be fleeting. It will come. It will go. And that will be the end of it. Enjoy where you are. Enjoy what the Lord's telling you. I get, <laughs> I have a lot of fun watching people because I'm a people person. I love to hug people and hold people. And when I walk in, I, I, I instantly observe everyone there. I instantly can see their frailties. I can instantly see into their eyes and see where they are with God. It's like the Spirit of God leads me into that place to talk to that particular person or group of people about salvation or healing or deliverance or whatever. I have a real funny uh, kind of humor about this, and one of them is, are you having fun yet today? Well, most people are not. Most people are tired, they're grumpy, they're wore out, they're broke, they're penniless, they're sick. They have some kind of problem, and they don't know how to deal with it. But I'm telling you, the meat and potatoes of God's Word, the bottom line of His Word is, have you sought Him first? Matthew 7, 7 says, you have not because you ask not. Have you not sought the Lord in this? You know, Israel would do real good as a nation as long as they sought the Lord. But when they got off chasing around in la-la land and got over in Syria or Egypt or someplace on the battlefield and got themselves in trouble, and then they cried out to God, and then he helped them. Why wouldn't we be smart and smart people? Why don't we go to God first and ask God to raise up godly men and women for, to be elected to our officials? and to remove the stench that's in our government in all, all positions from the least to the greatest, where they're doing things and saying things because of money and power, corruption. You know, in, in oil field days, in the cattle business days, those people would go and they would pay, give you money in the front and buy you out on the back. That is corruption. That is double-mindedness. We'll go to God with one hand and we've got our hand hid over here in the back. We're stealing from him. We're lying to him. He knows everything about you and me. You can't hide anything. You know, you can't hide anything from your wife or your husband. You may think you can, but you can't. They can smell a bad person in a mile away. A little kid can smell an evil person. A dog can tell when you're not being straight. So the presence of God is here this morning to help me and you come to realization that you need to say, Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I've messed up. And he knows it, but he wants you to ask for forgiveness. The moment you do, you're washed and you're cleansed from that. And he set you in a new pathway. He's made a new wine skin out of you. He's filled you with new wine. He's brought you out of that darkness and given you light. The image of the glory of God in Christ Jesus is in you. You're no longer in death. You're no longer in sickness. You're no longer in the things of this world. But you've been renewed, restored, and brought out and put into a new way, a new place, a new beginning. How many of us need a new beginning? You know, we make New Year's resolutions every year and say, well, I'm going to do this, this, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to do this, and we don't keep those. How many of us have, have we got real deep in trouble, and so we cry out to God, if you'll just help me get out of this mess, I'll never do it again, and I'll be faithful. And as soon as he helps us get out of that mess, we forget him and head off in the wrong direction again. If you don't stay in God's Word, you're never going to walk with God. If you don't meditate and listen, you're never going to hear, hear what he says through his word. You can go talk to a pastor, you can talk to me, you can talk to your next door neighbor. It's all fine and good, or your doctor, your lawyer, your counselor. But I'm telling you, when it rubber gets down or when you really get serious about this business of knowing God and his presence, you will sit down and you will say, I'm not moving from this spot till I hear your voice. And he'll talk to you. He sure will. He'll put thoughts in your mind and you'll know that it's God. He'll, he'll put a word, a Bible verse to you. He'll put, a, he'll put a neighbor across your pathway. He'll do something, but you will know that you know that he heard your cries and your prayers. Psalm 107 verse 20 said, They cried out in all their distresses, but he sent his word and healed them all. How many of us are crying out today for whatever reason and we think that he hasn't heard, but his presence is near to hear your very heart? When you are in trouble, God is near to you. Draw near to him. In Philippians 4, 6, says the Lord is near. It says praying with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Spirit there. It says tells you how to pray. It tells you how to enter his courts and what to think about. It says think on things of excellence, of good report. Think on these things. And then your mind will be at perfect peace. 
So when we begin to realize that God's presence is always around us because the Bible says he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, he'll never run from you, he's always there to help you and through every trial. I'm telling you today, fess up, guess up, and get on your cavallo, get on your horse, get on whatever method of transportation you're using, your burro or walk. But I don't care how you do it, but saddle up and let's go and let's meet the day. Let's meet each other with a smile on our face, a kick in our step, and know that we're children of God. This, this nation was founded on, on, on the Spirit of God, upon the truth and for liberty for everyone. That's the reason everybody all over the world wants to come here, because it's founded on the religious traditions that we can have liberty. We can have freedom. We can talk about anything and everything, and we can do what we want when we want. But people that are not here and not walking with God will try to use those freedoms against the freedom-loving people that we are. We are a giving, caring nation. Otherwise, we wouldn't be throwing our wealth to swine all across the earth or people that doesn't know God or people that are trying to destroy us or people that are greedy or we wouldn't be doing these things if we were seeking God. But what we're doing is we're not seeking God because we don't know God. We've raised up generations here of children and haven't taught them about God. But let me tell you something. God is a big guy and he can take care of business. All we need to do is cry out. He says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and I will hear their, heal their land. How many of you know that America needs a healing today? How many of you know that you need a healing right in yourself and your wife, your kids, your neighbors, whoever? How many of us know and are willing to, to lay down themselves and humble and say, Father, help us as a nation. Help us as a person. Help us come to your, your throne room and receive some grace, a little mercy, Lord. If we received what we deserve, so rightly deserve, it would be death and it would be hell and there'd be no repentance if we weren't able through God's mercy and his tremendous love for you and me. But you become religious, America. You become backward. You become wayward and you become a whore. And you've chased all the wrong things, but I'm going to give you one more opportunity to turn and come back to the Savior. It's here for you now. Are you ready to repent? America, have you, have you gone far enough into the hole? Do you think you need to make a U-turn and come back out of the hole? Do you think you've fallen so far yourself that there's no repentance? How far and how good is Jesus' blood? How far can his blood go to save each and every one of them? How far can his blood wash and cleanse the most vile of us? How, how far? Well, I go to jail and I get jailhouse religion. It don't matter where you are. If you know Jesus is Lord, you can't take that away from anyone. I'm telling you today, today is the day that you need to make a decision. And that decision, I'm going to make him the Lord of my life. And here's the way you do it. For with the heart you believe, with the mouth you confess that Jesus is the Son of God. And he came in the flesh. He was crucified upon that cross at Calvary, Mount Golgotha. He hung there till he passed away and says, it is finished. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And then they put him in a grave. At the end of that grave, he came out of that grave victoriously after three days and brought resurrection to everyone who lives and ever has lived through Jesus. They can come to know him as Lord and Savior. Fifty days later, he gave his spirit as a seal to how you and I might live and walk in an abundant life here now. He's come to tell you, and I've come to reassure you and to help you and to assure you that He is Lord and Savior. He is all those things. He wants to be the Lord of your life. So I pray this message today and all the messages that we do will inspire you. To, we encourage the brethren through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom. So I pray that everything we've done or said has not really torqued you off, but inspired you to say, Lord, I need a little help here this morning. I can't quite gather these things by myself. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we calm our exuberance and claim our ebernephrons, we walk excitedly before you knowing that we've delivered the message by the Spirit to the people and that they've been born again out of death, out of hell, out of sickness and disease, and they've been raised up to receive your Son as Lord, as Savior, as, as Redeemer, as everything that they hope Him to be because He is all things to all people. So we thank you, Jesus, that you hung on that cross each for each and every one of us. And you came out of that tomb and you gave us e eternal life with the Father. But you also gave us an abundant life right now through all this time we're here on this earth and after this earth. We know that we're your kids. We're your children. We know that we have everything we've sought. We know that you're doing all these things because you love us 
While we were yet sinners, you loved us enough to die for us. So we praise you and thank you for this message that has set the people free in Jesus' name. So today I would like to inspire you and encourage you to look at the end of this program to places where you may join our internet system on our daily devotions, our social networks at pastorjerrybond.com. You can pull up daily devotions. You can pull up sermons. You can see how to donate and help us take this gospel out. We're praying and believing God that he's going to take this nation on every station in the United States that has a city of 200,000 or more within five years. <clears throat> and we need a lot of help financially to do this because TV ministry is expensive. Every nickel or dime or dollar or, or whatever you give to this ministry stays in there. I do not draw a salary out of it. It all goes there. It stays there. We're not in the business of doing this for money. We're in the business of getting people saved, getting people healed, getting people to walk in the kingdom living here now. And we're doing it in the power of Jesus' name, in the authority of his name. We're walking in the spirit, telling you about what the word of God says, acting upon the word of God, living on the word of God, and encouraging and loving people to the kingdom. We're not trying to clean you up. The Holy Spirit can do that. He's a big guy and he knows how to do it. He knows your heart better than I know it. He knows what to tell you, when to do it, and how to do it. I pray that the Spirit of God is motivating you and inspiring you to get out of your whatever you're in and say, Lord, forgive me. And I pray that today is the day that you hear this and you'll do it today. Don't linger around in the trash pit. Get up and come on. There's greater things ahead of us. America has greater days and there's going to be a great spiritual awakening in America. I'm telling you right now, God is going to do it one more time because his people are crying out and repenting of our sins and asking him to do it one more time for this kingdom in America and around the world. I pray that you're inspired today by the name of Jesus and by his blood. And everybody said, Amen.